Hello friends, I'm Kayla. It's October and October is for horror. October is also for novellas for me. And I've been collecting a bunch of your horror recommendations. And so I'm gonna do two different vlogs this month where I read a bunch of novellas. This last one's a little bit of an outlier, but I also just wanna make sure I read Model Home by River Solomon because this just came in the mail this month. So I have novellas, I have a short story collection, and I have a novel. And any of these that you don't see me read and finish in this vlog will be out in the second vlog. Every day this week, I'm gonna read a short story from At Home with the Horrors by Sammy Scott. There are 14 in here, so that perfectly splits itself between the two vlogs. And then I figure I can read a novella a day. So maybe this, this seven will be in this vlog. I'm not totally sure. I have Weep Woman Weep. I have The Only Safe Place Left is the Dark. Uh, the Bell Chime, To Be Devoured, which I've heard is like the most extreme and grotesque. This one says extreme and grotesque to me, Dirty Heads. Uh, your Shadow Half Remains, which I've heard very mixed things about, and Pocket Knife Kitty. So every day this week, I'll check in with you about like what I'm doing and then what I'm reading. I don't think like any of these have audiobooks. I don't even know what I wanna read today. Maybe let's start with the most intense one to be devoured. And the activity I'm doing today is I need to get some flowers in this vase because it's looking really sad in here. Liam has been finding it absolutely hilarious to go around to all of my pumpkins and swap their lids. So there's this one, this one over here, and then this one, which is the most horrifying um, in my room. Oh my God, hey, I just vanished. Um, okay, I got my flowers. What else? I just went for my family walk. My, like, honestly, after dinner, family walk is pretty key to my current happiness. Um, Rob came home from work and brought flowers. So now I have two vases of flowers in my house. His are actually better than mine. I made the most delicious dinner. According to my husband, he said it's the best dinner I've ever made. So I'll link it down below. It was um, smothered chicken. But like, no wonder it was his favorite because I normally don't cook like that. Like I'm not cooking with heavy cream and butter like that. So he's gonna be really disappointed for now the rest of his life that I can cook like that, but don't. <laughs> anyway, what else has happened? I started to be devoured and now I understand what the devouring, what kind of devouring we're doing. So this book has no synopsis. There's no information about what it actually is. There's just blurbs on the back. And it's written in a font that's really difficult to read that people are just calling it grotesque and ugly and obsession madness. So I don't actually know what I'm supposed to say about this, if anything, but we're following a girl, a woman. She's in a relationship with another woman and it's talking about how like they met and how they got together um, and then Currently, our main character is visiting a therapist. She is coping, trying to cope with grief from losing like everybody in her family. She's losing it a little bit and she wants to devour living things. Andy gets obsessed with knowing what the vultures know. So it opens each chapter with like a little image of the vultures. And Andy wants to be like the vultures. She wants to consume flesh and, and dead things. It sends her down a twisted, unforgivable path. She must decide between abandoning the birds of prey or risk turning her loved ones into nothing more than meals to be devoured. There was just a scene that I read that made me go, oh, this is what we're doing. Um, and it had to do with menstruation. Now I'm halfway through and I'm interested to see how far we're gonna go. It's not like Night Bitch where the main character thinks that she is like she doesn't think she's a vulture. She's not turning into a vulture. She's not imagining herself as a vulture. She is still very much a human being. Well, this was only 80 pages, so I have 30 pages to go. I'll let you watch my facial expressions as I read.
Okay. Honestly, if that's the grossest thing I have to read this week, like I'm gonna be just fine. It was definitely nasty, not the nastiest thing I've ever read, but especially when it's in a novella, that's when I can appreciate it the most. It's like extreme horror that I'm reading for three, 400 pages just starts to be repetitive and pointless. When it's short, there's the ability for it to surprise you a couple times and then it's just over and it leaves you with wondering like what the book was trying to say, what it wanted to do. Um, I think there's definitely themes of like loneliness and desire like wanting somebody to understand you wanting to be understood wanting to live your own life wanting to be free and that's good when we have a short horror that wants to deliver either the scares or the grossness this one had no scares it was all gross and has something also to say or like has interesting characters that's when there's a good pairing so i'm gonna have to put together a ranking board of all of my favorite or every short horror i've ever read i feel like i'm putting it in like the b tier it accomplished everything that it set out to do it made me feel disgusted but i was also interested in the characters as much as i can be in like 80 pages rating wise this feels like a 3.5 would definitely recommend it it's just as like nasty as you think it's gonna be if you're into it you're into it and i'll see you tomorrow hello good morning it's not morning i lied oh my god it's 1 30. oh wow i've really done nothing with my day <laughs> i am feeling so bad and i need to find some motivation so i have an autumnal vlog turned on I am gonna do my laundry. I also today, I'm gonna start a new puzzle. It's a mushroom medley because I've decided I'm just gonna take it easy today and like the day's already half over. So <laughs> I guess I'm already succeeding. I hate when my body feels sick, but my mind feels fine because I am just as motivated as normal. I'm just as interested in everything. I still wanna do so much, but my body's like, stop take a break, like relax. But like my day-to-day -day life is not stressful anyway, so I don't feel like I have a right to relax. Ooh, that's a problem. That's something I need to deal with. <laughs> anyway, the first thing I need to update you on is I added all of my tabs to my short story collection last night so I can easily rate them as I go through. At Home with the Horrors, I did read the first one last night as I promised and I gave it a four. And I wrote down, this felt like a cautionary tale of always making up with your partner if you're in a fight before going to sleep. It was creepy. It was weird. It reminded me of, like, are you afraid of the dark? There's some kind of episode there that reminded me of what was happening with these characters. There was an epidemic of sorts and I really liked it. So to go with the pandemic of it all, I'm reading Your Shadow Half Remains today. And this is about a character named Riley who lives alone. They're deep into this apocalyptic scenario. Uh, it's been going on for a while where if you like make eye contact with people, you get really violent and you want to kill somebody. Riley has been surviving alone for a while when they meet a new person, Ellis. And Ellis has their own place to live, but they're nearby, so they're kind of neighbors. And they're talking about how they have to remember how to make social interactions, how to welcome someone to the neighborhood, how to make friends, but like nothing feels safe. But maybe this can be a safe place for both of them. It's like intense, but it also feels like it could be soft, but maybe not. Like either of these people could end up killing the other by the end. And I imagine, I guess that's how it's going to go because it is a violent story. Or they're going to save each other from violence or something. I don't know. I'm seeing how many days I can go wearing some great Halloween type looks and I can't think of how many I have in my closet and you're gonna see them all. But this is day two. I got this from Etsy. I'll link it down below. And then I'm also gonna read the second story in here called Teresa. So I'll see you when when I have something to say. It's me again. I did my laundry. Thank you so much for checking in. Uh, I did put it in the dryer and then didn't turn on the dryer. And then three hours later went to put on some clothes and it was all wet. I also did finish my book. So hurry to me. I feel so out of breath because I can't breathe through my nose. <laughs> I think my final rating of this is going to be... Ow. It's a four. 
I feel good about it being a four. Um, I saw somebody say, I was looking at a couple of reviews, which I want to come back to this conversation, try to remember, um, that said, one of them said, if this is a psychological horror, it's so much more psychological than horror. And I feel like we, just like recently, I was talking about a book and I just wanted to call it cosmic, not cosmic horror. And I feel like we don't do that. Like, when do we just call books psychological? It's just psychological first. Because it's about the impact of this pandemic that nobody really knows enough about to fully like understand or live with um, with certainty and with confidence. It's like you're just in this state of limbo. And it reminds me of like, I feel like so many of us or maybe just because people don't talk about it, I assume that everybody forgets, but we, we don't. The beginning of COVID, like this is obviously inspired by COVID. It was, I think, written like during, you know, 2020, 2021, where there was a lot of uncertainty. In the beginning, there was just so much confusion and you felt like you were in this limbo because people were like arguing back and forth and sharing things that weren't facts and you didn't know the truth about stuff like, I remember when people started wearing masks and then a, like a significant amount of people um, were saying like, that's so stupid. Like you don't need, nobody needs a mask. This isn't spread airborne. Like you can't pass it that way because there wasn't enough information. And then like information changed and it's co constantly evolving. And if you're not constantly like being informed and being aware, you're going to carry your misinformation and spread it. And so that's like not what this book is about. But I think the fact that it doesn't explain exactly what the epidemic is, how it happened, the origin, how far it's actually impacting the world, like that's not what the story is. It reminds me of that early time. So Amazon still functions in here. And that's a really interesting thing that, again, I saw some reviews mentioning that like, how does this make any sense if the world was really destroyed? Like how does how are we still talking about Amazon? And I think it's up to you if you think that the author is giving a take on like the dependability of capitalism, that no matter what, Amazon is still thriving. Or you can think this is like just a lazy take that the author wanted to write this epidemic, wanted to also have this budding romance, but it's a novella. So maybe they just thought, oh, I'll just keep Amazon running so I don't have to think about like the hunting and fishing and survival portions of this. Either perspective is fine, but I do like to believe the former because everything else about this feels so intentional that I do believe there's a perspective here on capitalism and consumerism. And even when people are ripping out their own eyeballs so they can't look at each other, the billionaires are still thriving. This does have quite a low average rating and I do understand why based on some of the things that I've talked about and a lack of explanation and it being so psychological. There is horror, hor horrific things happening and they're reflecting on horrific things that they've seen, but it's more just this um, idea of loneliness and connection and mostly paranoia because Riley is so unsure of herself and the epidemic and this new person who's just come into her life that she is so paranoid. She doesn't know if she can trust herself or anybody else and that's just what happens as they, as they um, connect. I definitely would recommend this more than I thought I would because I've seen mostly bad, bad opinions about this one. But I guess it depends on like what you're into. If you like the weird stuff that I like and unexplained stuff and more tender relationships at the end of the world, even though we don't even know if this is the end of the world, it could just be like one tiny place that is experiencing this. You can also wonder if the things that Riley's telling us is true, if the information that she is getting is true, or if she herself is losing it. All in all, happy to have read it. I'm so tired. I'm gonna read my short story and maybe update you before I go to sleep. Hello, it's a new day. Here's an update on my sickness. I'm sick. Here's an update on my um, Halloween wardrobe every day. This is not Halloween vibes, but it is fall. So I feel like it's fine. Um, I've, I'm in love with this. This is, I think, my favorite thing I bought from Aerie. I just bought two more in different colors. It's like 
the perfect sweater. It doesn't have pockets, which I was missing for a second. And then I was like, it would kind of make it too bulky though to tuck into jeans. And this is the perfect sweater to wear that covers your butt for leggings, or it's like thin enough at the bottom that you can tuck it into pants and it's just versatile and I love it. And then underneath I have another airy shirt. That's what's new with me. I just went and picked up a grocery order and I thought to make things more interesting for you, here's a different view. It's inside my vehicle. So exciting. Today, hey, this matches my shirt. I'm gonna sneeze. This is the Bell Chime by Mona Cabani. And it's about a woman who is a writer. That says, sorry, I was reading Mona Cabani's, but also somebody's here, hold on. I think this main character is an author as well. Like she's a horror writer, just like the author of the book is um, because I only read the first chapter, but she is in her apartment one day with her boyfriend and she leaves to go get something. And when she leaves, she finds a poster of her face, a photo she's never seen before. And it's like, this woman is missing. Have you seen this woman? She lives in delusion or lives in a fantasy world and can't confront her problems or something like that. And she obviously like freaks out and goes back and then her boyfriend is like not really taking it seriously. And he goes, oh, it's probably just one of your fans playing a prank on you. So I think she is a horror writer. His name's Dexter, which is never good. Hers is, wait, does she have a name? I'm not really sure the vibes. There was a long intro about the bell chime and how, I think it was from the, like it's from the author's perspective, like an intro to the novel about how she had these dreams, um, kind of like sleep paralysis, but got more in depth about what they really felt like. And there was like a person in it who's constantly like, do you hear the chime? And I'm just interested to see how that gets integrated into the story. So I'm gonna eat my yogurt, read some of the book, and I'll let you know how it's going. Oh, and to be festive today, I got the classic Pillsbury pumpkin cookies that you can eat raw or cooked. I finished the bell chime and it was ultimately a story about dreaming. It was about dreams. It was psychological, not necessarily the horror that I fully wanted. Um, I don't know where how to rate it. I feel like a three. When I look at Goodreads, it's people saying like, this was the worst written book ever, or this was like a masterpiece and incredible. And I just don't land in either camp. I think it was, it was fine. Some things that I had to say were interesting. It didn't blow me away. I don't really have many thoughts about it. And it's interesting because I read a story about kind of like an epidemic and then the novella that I read next was about an epidemic. And then I read a short story that was about dreams and dreaming. And then my book was about that. So I wonder if the next short story is also gonna be represented in the next novella. I'm a little bit behind on filming. Um, obviously, I don't feel great. But I went to a hockey game because I had to be there for Liam and to film. And um, it was a lot. It was intense. There was a lot of fights. I think there was, it was 100 penalty minutes. I think that was for just one team. I think the other team also had 100 penalty minutes. I might be wrong about that, but there, I think, and a whole game is only 60 minutes. So like, there was always somebody in the box. Sometimes there was three people in the box. They were fighting. Um, people got thrown out. Um, Liam was bleeding by the end. <laughs> like, it was a lot. And then today I had my live show for the Literally Dead Book Club for The God of the Woods. I read Blackbird. That was about dreams. Actually, I don't remember anything about it now. I gave it a three. And the second one was called Teresa. I forgot to update you. I gave it a 3.5. Um, it was cyclical and I liked that. The concept was interesting. Um, there was no real shock factor that I thought it could have had. And it was like about beyond the grave um, communication. The next one I have is The Sisters. Um, the next book that I've already pulled is Weep Woman Weep. And this is, has to do with women in a family. Are there sisters? The women of Sueno, New Mexico don't know how to live life without sorrow. That's La Llorona's doing. She roams the waterways looking for the next generation of girls to baptize, filling them with more tears than any woman should have to hold. I'm gonna read this and I think I'm also gonna try to read this today because like I said I'm a little bit behind and I have to start filming my 2006 video. So I think I want to put 
that up in between my two novella videos unless like that one is a flop and it takes me a long time to find a five star then um I'll do another novella video and just read them all in like one day <laughs> oh, I never ate my pumpkin cookies because like I don't have taste buds right now I can't taste anything because I can't smell anything but my activity today is gonna be spooky. Oh, I wish I had an audiobook. That'd be nice. Maybe Rob and I will actually put on a movie um, when they get back because they're at another hockey game and then going out um, with some people. I got two of these spooky cute things because I saw a TikTok where like two best friends got the same coloring book. It was this coloring book. I was very heavily influenced. And they each colored like the same picture and then compared and these are just so adorable and there's some bookish things in there like the cover has a ghost reading a book and there's like a little spell book i'm excited about this i even got new markers because i want to get back into coloring i definitely didn't need to go this hard but i did i'm very excited about it I made the mistake of taking a nap. <laughs> I just like fully fell asleep reading. And now, oh my God, my, like my body is so hot. It feels like I have a fever. I don't think I do. I also forgot the other thing that I did yesterday was I did a three hour Codenames live show with Rob. And it was so much fun. We're doing another one in November. I won. So hooray for me. Um, it was very fun. Everyone gets split into one of our teams. And not that that's like, an exhausting thing, right? Like it's just a live show. Like today I did a live show, but if you're not feeling well and then you go hang out with your friend and talk on their couch for three hours, that's also like you're exerting something. So I just don't know that I'm helping my sickness is what I'm saying. Uh, tomorrow I have to get my winter tires on because I'm driving to Vancouver in a couple days and I have to have winter tires. And I'm like, what do I do while my car is getting the tires on? Cause I don't even think the place that I go has a place to like sit and wait. So I'm just gonna be standing outside for hours. Like, what am I doing? I don't know. I don't know. This whole vlog is complaining. Well, yeah, this is where we're at. I have all these books sitting in front of me. I need to figure out what I'm doing. So indeed, both of these had to do with someone with a dead sister. So wild. Um, I think it's fun that I have no idea what my next book is about because I have no idea what the story is going to, how a story's gonna relate. It's called Peeping Tommy. <laughs> Pocket Knife Kitty. Oh, it feels like those two could be a weird super, super villain duo. I actually think Pocket Knife Kitty sounds kind of like a roller derby name. This one had to do with a woman whose sister died and her ghost is like haunting her house. She's elderly. I gave it three stars. No, I didn't. I gave it a 2.5. It was too quick and easy for me is what I said <laughs> an hour ago. And then this one is not really horror. I don't even know if I'm going to put it on the tier ranking thing that I in editing have figured out because it just didn't feel like horror. Um, it was a beautiful story of this woman dealing with the grief of loss, losing her best friend who she considered a sister um, to the river spirit. And then it was her like moving on with life and still thinking about her friend and talking about her friend. But she like found a, a career path, a way to make money, something that she felt passionate about. Um, she fell in love and it was just like this tender love story. But then she was also grappling with her loss and there were a few scenes like when her friend died, you know, there was, there was sad things happening and there was a couple imagery things that felt a little unsettling, but like not really, not in a way that I would put this in the horror category first. I don't even know if it put itself in the horror category now that I think about it. This was recommended to me by um, a couple of you and I'm glad cause I liked it. It was like witchy, gothic, but also like romance. And I think that this author, if she hasn't already, should write something like a romance novel and I would read it. I'm giving it a 3.75. Now, Pocket Knife Kitty. The reason I don't know anything about this is because it was published, it's published, it's written by a friend of mine. I just saw it on Instagram one day. Like I knew Shannon wrote stuff. 
Shannon is one third the originator of Spookathon, if you remember her at the beginning of my channel. She doesn't currently make bookish content, but she's writing. She's a writer. She writes stuff. And I saw this on Instagram and I was like, I'm gonna buy it, obviously. <laughs> Jamie is a 30 year old banker wedged between grief and newfound freedom. Through a domino cascade beyond her control, she winds up stuck in her suffocating hometown. The monotony is broken swiftly when following a night of spite-fueled impulse, Jamie soon begins to undergo a rapid and gruesome transformation. I'm so very excited to read this, but also like terrified. I don't know. Oh, I meant to mention in the last clip, if you're looking for something to participate in, because um, Spookathon has been around for a couple years, if you were also intrigued by, especially um, Model Home by River Solomon, you should read that. Participate in Blackoween. It's all about reading crime novels by black authors. She's doing tons of uh, live reading sprints and puts a lot into the readathon. So definitely go participate. I will be participating next with Model Home. The story and this actually did have something in common. Okay. And this is like a thing now. All everything's aligning and it's strange. Keeping Tom was about this kid who was walking around and like followed this girl home from school and like went to her house. Pocket Knife Kitty opens with this woman meeting a guy in a bar and just taking him home. And she doesn't know his name or anything. And I was like, girl, you are just trying to get murdered. And then it led to them um, getting it on, which this one did not. So it did continue with him peeking into other people's houses and just like a neighborhood curiosity that he had and it, it ended up being a little bit of a revenge story too. Uh, I gave it three stars. I thought it was okay. This one is so well written, like so well written. I highlighted this entire description um, of this man that she meets in the world. I don't know, just like the way that it was described was great. Anyway, after she sleeps with him, she actually, they, both even described like walking down the sidewalk and loving the sound of like stepping on the leaves or the cracks in the sidewalk. After he leaves, and they have a very weird sexual encounter. I wasn't expecting it to be so explicit. And it was like not a great encounter. And then, oh my God, what is happening to my neck? Afterwards, she's experiencing weird stuff. Like she's bleeding and she has a physician friend and she goes to figure out what's wrong with her. And like maybe it's an STI. Um, but we know that there's like going to be a transformation. And now I'm wondering like Pocket Knife Kitty, is she turning into a cat? Because I don't think I'm going to like that. There's also these emails from somebody to somebody that I don't fully understand, but I'm very intrigued. She hasn't started turning into anything yet, but she's noticing like just weird things about her body. And I can't wait to see where this goes. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but I'm going to wrap it up. And tell you my reading. I feel at least the writing is great. Liam and I, he he just came home from hockey and just like sat down and colored with me, which is a rare event to happen. I didn't expect it. This is his page and this was my page. You definitely need a paper in between and there's some blank pages at the back you can rip out. Otherwise it will bleed through, at least the markers that I got. And now I'm gonna color with Rob and you guys are gonna have to vote on your favorite. back we did our coloring we ate cookies we started watching um the nhl face off mini series really liking that and i finished pocket knife kitty you guys this was so good <laughs> i'm giving it i'm giving it a four 4.25 i wanted it to be a five so bad um there is some things that just like happen a little too easily, but considering it's a novella, like it still makes sense. This is inspired by something else or really similar to something else, but I don't know if like giving you that would ruin like this experience. So just know that it deals with sex and death and it's body horror out the wazoo. Like Oh my God, it was so gross. And I can, I just like when I can like something so gross because 
oftentimes if it's a full-length novel I'm like this is too much like I don't like the extreme horror I don't want to read that for hundreds of pages this was the perfect amount like it's over now and I'm good and I'm so glad that I liked this and I can tell you all to pick it up um it's not one of those fours that's like oh it was a three but I'm bumping it to a four it's like a four that's could could be five in another universe. Jamie is a character that you might find relatable if you live in a small town and you see the same people every day and you live the same life every day and nothing exciting ever happens. And then suddenly someone's flirting with her at a bar and she gets excited about it. But like, it's not a good situation. Bad things come of it. I am gonna read everything, anything else that Shannon puts out. I don't wanna sound surprised <laughs> that this was good, but Shannon, if you're here, I'm so glad you wrote this. You're kind of gross for that. So shout out to you. Yeah, go read this, you guys. Okay, I dropped off my vehicle to get tires on, and don't yell at me. I'm clearly not relaxing, but I didn't wanna have to sit, like, I don't wanna sit there for an hour and a half. I don't want someone to come pick me up, take me somewhere, I have to come back in an hour and a half. So I thought, let me do a casual 40 kilometer bike ride. <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can hit 40K. I feel, you know, I feel alive. Um, I have an abundance of tissues and hauls in here so i'm ready to go and i thought because i'm packing up my bike and putting it into storage probably at the end of this week it's gonna start to get too cold it's even like a little too cold today i actually brought um gloves just in case i needed them and then my lunch because i last time i got my time zone it took three hours the time before that it took three hours this guy says an hour and a half but somebody left a comment recently asking me if i'm trying to make sure nobody's coming by because how embarrassing asked me if i like my bike if i I don't remember exactly what they asked. I think they asked if I would recommend it. And so I'm gonna give you a quick review of my bike. I'm not a bike reviewer by trade. I know it's shocking. This is my bike. I've shown it to you before, but let me tell you that I love it while you look at it. I don't know what it's called. It says specialized and then it says that. And I bought this separately and this separately. And then I also bought this it's the perfect size for the back. And I bought this bike seat. Um, it's just slightly wider than the one it came with. I will figure out what it's called. Oh, it says, it says the cup on the back. I don't know what that means. Maybe this is what my bike is called. Como? A Como Specialized something. If you're a big booty girl like me, which I feel like the person was who left that comment, which is why they were asking. Um, you don't want like as much as it's appealing to grab a big cushy seat that you like sit on like a chair that's not what you want you want to be sitting on your sit bones still i think you can tell i barely know what i'm talking about all i know is i love the bike i think the bike is the best thing i've ever bought for myself genuinely best thing i've ever bought for myself can't remember how much it was i'll put it here just so you have a frame of reference um i chose one that has a large weight limit because i'm a big booty girl and there's only a few that there's like a good chunk of bikes that say their weight limit is 250. I went with a 300 one. Some of the 250 ones, the one that say 250, they can haul 250. They're actually including the weight of the bike in that 250. So if it's like a 75 pound bike, it's actually not carrying 250 pounds as a person. Every bike has a different way that they list their um, stats. So I would say just go with one that says 300. This one is a 300 one and there was only a couple to choose from. Basically the only thing I was choosing between, oh I also had to buy the this thing separately. Um, you have to choose between if it's a step through or a step over and I've only ever ridden, ridden a step over so it was hard to get used to the step through but now I really appreciate it. Rather than throwing your leg over like which is fine for me, um, you just like slide through it and then sit down like casually and I quite enjoy that people are coming by pause for one second morning I said morning it's afternoon I'm an idiot the only other options I had were like ones that are specific to a brand so it's like you have to go to that specific bike shop anytime you want to buy anything new or fix anything and like I didn't want the Tesla of e-bikes and then the other option was there there were ones with like a large a longer back like this, but then a whole extra like foot, because I guess they think if you, you're trying to haul 300 pounds, you're hauling cargo. I'm like, no, it's just my giant butt. It was really easy to get used to. I never personally go over eco mode, but it also has sport and turbo. These are all pedal assist. Like there's no um, throttle on it, which you're not actually allowed if you are biking on the trail that I bike on. The thing that I'm biking on is very flat. Like I'm not really, I'm not doing crazy stuff with this. If I was going uphill, I imagine turbo would come in handy, but you're still like pedaling the entire time and it's still difficult. But yeah, I have nothing to compare it to. So I can't tell you it's the best bike, but it I have had absolutely zero concerns, no issues. It's the perfect thing. Now that I'm on this bike ride, 
I need to grab an audiobook and I don't have any horror novellas that have audiobooks, I don't think. Maybe Midnight on Beacon Street, but I was thinking maybe I'll just check out Model Home and I'll tell you when I get back if, if I'm digging it. And then I'll just finish that instead of another novella today. There was something when I got my tires changed on the island because I popped one. I had to go to like a Canadian tire, which is like not my preferred place to go. And they told me a whole bunch of stuff that was like messed up in my vehicle. And I was like, I don't live here. I don't know if you're trying to get money from me. I don't know, like, I don't know who you are. So I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna check with my people. And they said, yeah, your stuff's not really that messed up. <laughs> There's a few little like cracks and stuff, but it can, you can take your time getting it fixed. So now I feel good about that. I have my winter tires on to go. On the trip, I think I'm gonna sit here and eat my lunch anyway, and then go get groceries, and then pick Liam up from school, and what else? Um, I'm not sure how to feel about the book yet. I wasn't listening for the full hour and a half because the wind got too much that I couldn't actually hear what was happening, and so I just started listening to music. It's one of those books that is gonna be pitched as like a horror or a haunted house, and it's just a little bit um, different. It's more like, literary than that and more character driven we have a character and i actually still don't think i have a grasp on like the total vibe so i don't want to pitch it wrong but we're getting reflections of like um their family moving into this house for the first time as children and now they're an adult and i don't fully know what's happening yet so i shouldn't have started updating you but i just wanted to tell you i biked i'm hot now I have two hauls less than when I started and two tissues less than when I started. I am two thirds of the way through Model Home now. So we're following a character who recently lost their parents in like kind of weird circumstances and it's getting a lot of media traction and people are trying to understand what happened but so are they and their sisters. And so they're all coming back together. There's a little tumultuous relationships. Some of them have children and dealing with the children. Um, it's just like a big family epic at this point. The question is if the parents died in like supernatural ways because they grew up in a home that was weird. Like they saw ghosts sometimes and just like strange things are explained or unexplained. So it could be like a supernatural reason the parents died or just um, they took their own lives and they left behind money. And there's just like all of these conversations. There's a lot of dynamics between people. And I don't know, I've read from this author three times. Um, I gave them a four stars, four and a half and four and a half. And this one just doesn't feel the same. It actually reminds me a lot of Akweke and Mezzi's work. This feels like a mix of um, Freshwater, and weirdly, Dear San Thurin, which is a memoir, but it kind of feels, it's just giving me those vibes. The haunting itself is not being very explored, or like there's nothing really that supernatural going on. They're just having a lot of memories of their childhood and the way that their parents raised them, which was, you know, there are unique um, ways of neglect and unique ways of abuse that aren't clear or aren't um, what you traditionally expect, like their parents experience the types of parents who beat them, who used physical violence. And because our main character didn't grow up with physical violence, it's hard to accept um, that there was still like withholding of love and that's its own form of neglect. And so there's just a lot of exploration in here. Um, there's some strange writing choices that aren't just the narrative continuing, like there are little insertions that make it interesting, but I don't, I don't know how to feel about this yet. My Halloween activity for the day is not a Halloween activity. Do you want to throw me the cheesies in the freezer? <laughs> I saw a TikTok that said these cheesies specifically tasted incredible when put in the freezer. It's obviously not something I would have ever considered on my own. And in fact, they don't even really feel cold. So I don't know. I love it. Well one? It's better. It's better than itself. Huh. How is it softer being frozen? That doesn't even make sense. 
I don't know, but it's missing that like chalky quality. Yeah. That I don't like. Yeah. These are the kind of cheesies that if you eat the whole bag, you will throw up. Yeah. Like there's just something wrong. <laughs> yeah. There's so much corn cornstarch. No, corn? What is it? Just um, corn. This actually feels Halloween-y to me because I feel like I only see these trick-or-treating. Put them in the freezer, you guys. Oh, they're Canadian. Okay, 14% of you guys. Put these in the freezer. <laughs> hey. This is my final Halloween-y fall look. I had some people ask me when I wore this last time where I got it. I'm so sorry. I cannot find it anywhere on the internet. I found it at Sunshine Records, Sunrise Records. Um, it just says Halloween by John Carpenter on the tag. I've tried reverse Google image searching. I cannot find it, um, but I love it and I'm happy to own it. What I'm not so happy about is um, having to tell you about this, having to tell you my thoughts about this because I didn't like this and talking about it makes me feel not good. It reminds me of reading the September house last year, how it just was, I didn't like the writing style. I didn't like the plot. Like I was not having a good time, but the whole thing is a metaphor for something else, right? And so after I put up my review of two stars, people were like, but it's like saying such important stuff. And I'm like, I know. And it seems like I'm hating on the concept but that's not what it is. And so I, like, I don't like this. I didn't like the writing. I found it, I don't know, it just didn't let you, it just didn't bring you in the way that I thought. And it was a family drama. Their drama makes it sound like I'm cheapening it though. This is a really fucking heavy book, like heavy. It reminds me of reading Black Girl Unlimited. And Again, this, just like the September House, I'm not saying they're similar concepts at all. So don't pick this up thinking it's like the September House or Black Girl Unlimited, but I just, those are the things that I can most closely compare it to, where you're expecting a certain type of story and it, there's so much metaphor and it's saying so many important things and highlighting important things. And I think this will work for most people. I haven't seen a single negative review for it. Granted, it just came out. Um, but it just didn't work for me. The marketing isn't incorrect. Like if you actually read this all the way through and you take this for what it is, this is the story. It's the terrors of contemporary American life. It's the bad things that are happening to people. But then just the vibe of this, I don't know, is I'm afraid might make people think it's a more traditionally haunted story. And while these people are haunted and it is horror, it's the horrors of grief. It's the horrors of racism. It's the horrors of just like poor treatment. There are things that happen to children in here that I really did not want to be reading. That's not affecting my reading. Being confronted with things is important. And I just don't know what to say about this. I just didn't like the style of it. I didn't like the journey that it took me on, even though I think it was painting an intentional picture. I found the perspectives could have had a little more clarity um, and been more distinguishable, all of the characters, but it also really does fit with everything that River Solomon has done in the past. So it's not like this was unexpected. I just didn't, I did not enjoy it. I'm so sorry to say. I think I'm gonna give it a two. Then the next story in At Home with the Horrors was called Becca. I laughed my way through this one and then gave it a four. It was about a couple and there was a man beast thing outside their window at night and it was a little ridiculous. The last things that I'm going to be reading in this video are Sleep Talker and Dirty Heads. And I hope we ended on a great note because I've given out a range of ratings, but I need that five. The story of a boy who dreamed of becoming a man but dreamed of a monster instead. Cosmic horror coming of age. Final vlog update. I am tired. I am. I had to wake up at five for Liam's hockey practice and I'm going to rest now. I'm seven stories in, so halfway through the amount of stories in At Home with the Horrors, but I'm only a third of the way through the actual book because the last story is like 100 pages on its own. Um, I gave the most recent one a four. It was called Sleep Talker. And it's about dreaming. Ow. 
and um, losing control. I thought it was good. I thought it was interesting. Honestly, reading this has solidified for me that I don't think I would ever pick a singular authored short story collection for the book club because I was thinking about it for next year. Um, we did our first short story collection out there screaming this year and it was really fun going through every individual story and talking about like if we would read from that author again and everything that authors come out with and I'm realizing through reading this that they don't really stand out individually because there's not there wouldn't be much to talk about as far as like writing style and how much you enjoyed like a peek into that author's stuff because it's so consistent so if they're there have been like probably three stories out of the seven that I don't even know if I would be able to build a two minute discussion out of. So just making realizations. Uh, I finished Dirty Heads. I didn't like this. It's by Erin Dries. I'm giving it a two, I think. I just didn't care, um, which is really unfortunate. The writing was fine at the beginning and then just got really simple. And also there are some perspectives from like the evil entity in here that I hated like a lot um it was really cheesy to me and as far as cosmic horror that's not what category I would personally put this one in because when I think of cosmic horror it's like unexplained it's strange and there's just a certain like style to it that didn't exist in here this has more of a like you get visuals on scary things and you get answers to certain things, which I don't think cosmic horror is. It's leaning that way, but it just doesn't feel like something that I would recommend with my other list of cosmic horror book recommendations, you know? So it is a coming of age, especially for the majority of it. Like the evil entity, those little sections bring in the horror, but then it's not until near the end where it really picks up for like one scene. The rest of it is just this teenage boy who is grappling with his sexuality and people telling him who he is and what he is um, being hateful towards him and him just like wondering a lot of things about himself while he, he's dealing with his father going missing. It's in the 90s which I should like. There was a scene, well, multiple scenes in like a video store talking about VHS tapes, what section to go to, what he wants to like watch, but it, it wasn't really that horrifying in the way that I especially like in this selection have come to expect from a novella to really pack that punch especially when you're like considering the cover this did not live up to everything here that's everything that I read here is my current ranking of every horror novella that I have read I think that's what this tier list is and I guess this one is going in near the bottom next week I'll either see you for another novella video if I don't feel like I'm burnt out on them or I have found a five star from 2006 and that video is ready to go up. So I'll see you then. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're doing well. I hope by the next time you see me, I'm doing well. And uh, that's it. Bye!